Income tax? Why, I'm not even old enough to vote. If you're single and you support your parents, are you the head of the house? Do you save on taxes? Uh, I had this house and it blew down during the last storm. Now, how much do I get allowed? Yes, Dad. I learned the rule in class. I'm an exemption on your return, but I also file a return myself to get a refund from what they withheld on my summer job. But I paid a tax when I bought the car. Isn't that deductible? Report my tips every month. I pay taxes on my tips when I file my return. Does that sound familiar? I bet you. I'm Dave Garraway. The voices you just heard are the voices of Americans, like you and me and all of us. Nobody likes to pay taxes, but most of us do recognize that taxes truly are the price of our civilization. We know that, like it or not, it is our way of helping to pay for the USA. In fact, most Americans demonstrate this belief by paying voluntarily their share of what it costs to run the government. And when the returns are in, 97% of all of our revenue has come in through self-assessment. And your government is doing everything it can to help make your income tax return easier. Easier to understand, easier to fill out. To get your refund quicker, too, if one is due to you. So stick around. I think we can all learn something right now. Let's talk taxes. <laughs> How do you do? Come on in. You've got nothing to worry about, you see. It won't even bite you. I want you to meet the tax man who has more headaches than I think all of us. Sheldon S. Cohn. The Commissioner of Internal Revenue. Welcome to Washington, Dave. Thank you. Mighty nice to be here. A lot of our taxpayers probably have questions and would like to be here with me, but I've brought a few for you, if you may answer them now. I'd be glad to try. Why don't you have a chair? Well, Commissioner, this first question is a very important one, and I'll put it pretty directly. Do most people really pay their taxes honestly? I mean, the correct amount and on time. Yes, Dave, they do. That's the kind of question I'm very happy to answer about the American citizen. He does an outstanding job of supporting his government. In fact, if they don't, there's not much government, is there? That's right. This is a great country, but it costs money to run it, to defend it, and to plan for its future. I think our citizens their responsibilities quite seriously. Well, then, is there a secret, and if so, tell us, to making out a really good return? I don't think there's a secret, Dave. I think there are two separate thoughts. First, keep good records. That's essential. I think that most people that have trouble making out their returns aren't having trouble with the form itself. Their trouble is that they're having trouble finding the records, the information to fill out on the return. Second thought, what's that? The second thought is to follow the instructions carefully. There's a booklet of instructions that accompanies your tax form that has the answers to questions that most people need. The correct information and follow the instructions line by line. This makes the task a great deal easier. Well, then, all it's involved really is to keep good records and follow those instructions. Yes, we citizens do take our tax responsibilities seriously. Even if we live in the city, in an apartment or a house, or on a farm, our problems are much the same. To make a living, to get ahead, Many of us work in plants, such as this one. Take Joe Miklas. Joe's an executive. After taxes, he'll net around 20,000. Eva Schmidt is Joe's secretary. Eva's salary is 5,000. The office girls average around four. Doug Thompson is top man in the shop. 
Doug's in the $9,000 bracket. Mike Hennessy's pay is $7,500, or around $145 a week. Jerry Falco is good for $75 a week. It's his first job. Irma Dalrymple won't tell her age or her pay. Adam Swenson, one of Joe's customers, has a truck farm outside town. He hopes to net around 11000 this year. Comes tax time and they all have one thing in common. How much do they owe the government? Or how much refund do they get? Well, most of the answers are right here. The instruction booklet for 1966 covers most everything the average taxpayer wants to know. The instructions follow the tax form, too, line by line. For the taxpayer who needs more detailed explanations, there are available many other booklets, either free or at nominal cost. If you're over 65, for example, there's a special pamphlet outlining tax benefits for older Americans. There's a tax guide for the farmer. A special booklet dealing with such deductible items as may be caused by disasters, casualties, or thefts. There's a tax guide for the small businessman. And for the salesman who has business-related dinners. There's a pamphlet covering travel, entertainment, and gifts. So if you will just read the instructions or these booklets, you can't go wrong. These are all available at IRS district offices. <laughs> Remember Jerry Falco at the plant? For Jerry and some 20 million other Americans with lower incomes, the card form 1040A is best because it's simplest. And if he has a refund coming, he'll get his refund without delay if he's enclosed his W-2 forms and clearly written his name, address, and correct social security number, and if he has signed his return. Just surprising how many people forget simply to sign. Incidentally, anybody who is eligible to use the short card form, 1040A, is urged to do so because it is the easiest to fill out. If you want to know which form you qualify for, you'll find a complete explanation in the instructions. This year's return will be a sad one for Eva Schmidt. Eva's the boss's secretary. Eva lost her husband last year, and now, for the first time, she has the task of making out her own return. She wonders whether the life insurance she received is taxable. And what about the small inheritance that her husband left? Can she claim exemption for her husband? To guide her in taking the proper allowable deductions, she refers to the instructions. She finds changes in marital status under married persons, joint or separate returns. Yes, this year she is entitled to file a joint return. Her inheritance and her insurance, both tax exempt. Then she finds something she hadn't thought about. The refresher course she took last year to help maintain her skills required on her job is a legally deductible item. You know, failure to claim allowable exemptions and deductible expenses often costs taxpayers a whole lot of money. And so, Eva Schmidt finds the instructions were a great help to her. Now, what about Doug Thompson? Doug owns his home. He's still active, but looking forward to retirement. Doug! Doug! Come on in, dear. It's getting late. And you know what you've got ahead of you. Okay. In just a minute. I'll get you a nice hot cup of coffee. Well, it's not going to be too difficult, is it? Notice, please, how Doug and his wife have kept receipted bills for all their deductible items in separate envelopes in a small box. Medical and dental, charitable contributions, taxes, interest, canceled checks. 
They know that after expenses, including depreciation, rents will net them $300. Doug checks to see that he's using the proper tax rate schedule, attaches his W-2 form, double checks for errors in arithmetic, and their correct social security numbers. And now, both of them put their signatures on the joint return. Now, if everybody was as careful as Mr. and Mrs. Thompson, taxpayers wouldn't have so many headaches. Would it surprise you to learn that last year, the IRS paid refunds of $82 million because of mistakes in mathematics, simple arithmetic on forms 1040 and 1048. At the same time, the IRS collected more than $186 million in additional taxes from taxpayers who made mistakes. Many of these mistakes could have been avoided by careful reading of the instructions. Now, how are these errors found by the Internal Revenue Service? One answer is at Martinsburg, West Virginia, the National Computer Center, headquarters for what the tax people call ADP, Automatic Data Processing. Here, these computers and others at seven regional service centers check and process information from every return all over the country. Here at the National Computer Center is the place of the master file the storehouse of everybody's complete tax record. Service centers feed information to the master file from all over the country, on every individual, on every business. as machines are, they do have to be fed correct information. In one year, four million returns were found to have errors of one kind or another. The social security number missing or the wrong number. People forget to sign. People even forget to enclose their withholding forms. All human mistakes which cost time and money to correct. These mistakes cause delays in refunds or result in your tax payment not being credited to your account. You get out of a machine only what you put into it. Mike Hennessy can tell you. But let's look in on the Hennessys at home. Right now, like a lot of other people, they're trying to make both ends meet. What else can we deduct this year? I'm trying to get all our tax figures together. How about the interest you pay buying the car on time? Hey, you're right. And those interest charges on that washing machine of yours, too. Uh, what about the $700 Bud earned working in the supermarket this summer? Isn't that income we have to report? No, Mom. I report that, and I'm still an exemption for you. I learned that in my civics class. The rule is, if you provided over half my support, you can claim me on your return. Also, I can file my own return. So you see, I'll get a refund of what my boss withheld. <laughs> well, that's good to know. Oh, don't forget you have to report the savings bank interest as income. That's not good. Which reminds me, 
The interest on the mortgage is tax deductible, and there's a tax saving that's really a sizable deduction. Yeah, that is good. Thanks, honey. Well, I'm glad I'm some help. And you always said a woman has no head for business. <laughs> There, you see, you save some and you pay some. Now let's drop in on Irma, the telephone gal. Well, I have all my papers. Wouldn't you know it? A busman's holiday. All day long she's at the switchboard, and now she's putting in overtime, and in a very good cause. I have read the instructions already, but what I want to know is, I have both my parents living with me. I support them. I'm the only one working, so that makes me the head of the house, doesn't it? Yes. Since you furnished over one half of each parent's support, you're allowed three exemptions on your return. Oh, and be sure and use the head of the household tax table in figuring your tax. This will save you some money. Well, that's nice to know. What about doctor bills I paid for them before they signed up for Medicare? Since your parents are both over 65, their doctor bills and other medical expenses are fully deductible on your return. Anything else? No, and, and thank you very much. You're very welcome. Good morning, Internal Revenue Service. There, you see, you don't have to be a telephone operator to get information. Just phone and ask for it. Internal Revenue has 58 district offices and several hundred other local offices in many cities and towns all over the country. If you need tax assistance, they'll give it to you. It's one of the services they give to the public. That's what they're there for. Taxpayers will find they can get answers to many questions right over the telephone. Of course, most of the answers are right in the instructions. Sometimes one taxpayer has problems more complicated than another. Take Adam Swenson. As a farmer, he's self-employed. He pays his own Social Security, up to the $6,600 maximum income. Adam doesn't have what you call a big spread, but just comfortable. Cows and chickens. Now, when a chicken farmer figures his income tax, even nature gets into the act. For instance, baby chicks might cost Adam, say, 15 cents apiece when they're just hatched. He deducts this cost as an expense, and he must report as income the amount they bring when sold as full-grown chickens, plus, of course, the proceeds from the sale of any eggs they've produced. Naturally, all that goes into raising them, hired help on the farm, and feed and coops, which must be replaced each year, and depreciation on the equipment, and so on. All these are deductible business expenses. Being thrifty, Adam learned long ago the value of keeping records and receipts. Even a $25 item, unrecorded or forgotten or unsubstantiated, could cost him many good hard dollars. And Adam is no man to throw away those dollars. It's a good idea to hang on to those records after you filed your return, too. As our friend Joe Miklas is about to find out. Let's look in here on Joe as he gets ready for a visit from the revenue agent. Mr. Schmidt, put these in my personal tax file, please. Yes, sir. Oh, and be sure and let me know the moment the revenue agent gets here. Very well. What do you mean, report my tips every month? I pay taxes on my tips when I file my return. You see, I just switched over from working in a factory to driving a cab. Is, is this something special for hack drivers? No, it applies to all employees who get tips. Anyone who gets tips of more than $20 in one month when he works for one employer has to report them to the employer 
by the 10th of the following month. The Social Security law now makes tips count towards Social Security benefits. So it's to your own advantage to report tips fully each month. It means that later on, when you retire, your Social Security benefits will be higher. Oh, Social Security benefits higher. Well, I didn't know that. Well, sorry your car broke down, but I'm glad you chose my cab. Thanks a lot. I appreciate that tip most of all. Well, think nothing of it. Seeing you. The revenue agent is here to audit Nicholas's tax return. Every year, the IRS selects for further examination about 5% of the individual tax returns it receives. The selection is based on standards designed to identify the return in which the greatest likelihood of error exists. Joe's return falls into this category. Mr. Miklas, this is Mr. Connors. Mr. Miklas, it's a pleasure. Mr. Connors, this is my identification. Why don't you work here? You'll have more room. Oh, sure. Thank you. Mrs. Schmidt, bring in my tax file, please. All my tax records are right here. Okay. I'm glad that you can do the audit on my personal tax return while you're here at the plant auditing the company's return. Mr. Miklas, your deductions are certainly well documented. If everybody was as careful as you, we'd all have less problems. Now, we finished with most of the other items before, but I'd like to check out a few others. Would you let me see your records for your business entertaining, please? Uh, yes. Yes, it is. Oh, that's fine. Thank you. Well, Mr. Miklas, these records you keep on travel and entertainment expenses are as good as all your other records. I'm very pleased to hear you say that. We have taken pains to see that they're accurate and complete. Now, I've got some good news for you. The deduction for interest that I found in your records, but which you overlooked and failed to claim on your return, will almost offset the deduction that cannot be allowed, which we discussed earlier. I'll recompute these figures right now and tell you exactly how much your additional tax will be. It doesn't look like it will amount to much. Well, I'm somewhat surprised at this development. You shouldn't be surprised that we found something that you overlooked. Our only concern is with the correct tax. We want to be sure you don't underpay, and also that you don't overpay. Today, keeping records is important to every taxpayer. If he travels or has entertainment expenses for which he's not reimbursed by his company, he must be prepared to substantiate his claims. For most taxpayers, canceled checks and receipted bills are all that's necessary to prove that claimed deduction. Revenue agents aren't hard to deal with if you can prove your claims. For the most part, they're pretty reasonable guys. When you think about it, they're taxpayers too, just like us. You're late. I've been waiting dinner. Dinner? But the time. Honey, tonight I've got to prepare our own tax return. Mmm, something smells good. Let's have dinner first.
Most of the money your government collects to run and defend our country comes from people like these. People who voluntarily report and pay their correct tax. The American citizen has become the wonder of the civilized world because he believes that even high taxes are the necessary price of our freedom and of our way of life. Our income tax law is the best obeyed income tax law in the world. And you and I make it so. Because we believe in America and in our future. <laughs>